Now back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. Jesse the sleigh bell jingling, ring, tingle, tingling, too. Come on, it's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Less than two weeks to the big day. Welcome back to The Law Show. Sterling Fox joined by joined rather by Joe Murphy, QC, and Bill Dick, partner, and uh, Murphy Batista, the personal injury law firm in Vancouver, and now with offices up in the Okanagan in Kelowna. Bill's down from uh, the interior for the second visit on the program. The office has tripled in size since we saw you last. I don't know whether that's good. I mean, it's good for the firm, but gosh, that that's an awful lot of personal injury business in a relatively speaking small area, Bill. Well, you know, it, it's, uh, it's actually not that small of an area. I mean, because uh, uh, you take in the whole Okanagan, the whole Okanagan of Valley, course. Which, which is growing uh, quite significantly in terms of size. And and so there's, uh, yeah, there's lots of work to be had. We're talking about uh, liabilities. It's party season. Who doesn't know that already? Uh, some people listening to us this morning, go, go, turn it down. It's just a little too loud. Uh, because, of course, they stepped out at last night. We talked about uh, the liabilities and responsibilities as they affect commercial people, bartenders and restaurant owners and servers and so on. We've also talked about private parties held at the house and so on. There's another drinking scenario that occurs quite frequently at this time of year, and it happens at work. You know, I'm just going to stop by, uh, catch a, catch a, uh, uh, well, I'm going to say hello to a couple of clients on my way home. And so you stop off at the client's place of business, and you're in the boss's office in the back room, and out comes the jug, and yeah, you told him, Merry Christmas, and, and off it goes. And, uh, you know, sooner or later, somebody's going to drive home. They're probably all going to drive home. But in the case of that drink at the office, Joe Murphy who's the boss of a, a, a large office full of people and would understand the proprietor's liability issues, what are the liabilities or responsibilities of the person who runs that business? Well, Sterling, there was a case some years ago in B.C. of a young fellow who, following the completion of a project at work, um, then was provided with a bunch of beer and, and these this group of people, mostly young, to celebrate how well they'd done this project, Okay, started drinking beer, and he had several beer, and he left there um, intoxicated. Which essentially was the workplace. That's Yes. Right. Okay. He then went to a bar and had more to drink, and on his way home, a terrible accident happened. And in that case, the court found that the employer who started the ball rolling by serving a lot of beer to the this group of young people who'd finished this project, uh, was responsible in part for what happened because they began the process of this fellow getting drunker and drunker, and in the end there was a disastrous accident and terrible injuries. So uh, in yeah. terms of, of the findings against the uh, the business for sort of starting the ball rolling. Now, the guy went to a bar afterwards and got really tanked. So was there a qualification of the responsibility of the company? You would be 30% responsible, and the rest of the liability falls on, on the young man who carried on after he left the workplace where you served him. The, the fundamental issue in, in negligence law, Sterling, is that an individual, an adult, is responsible for their own actions and their own decisions. So that's fundamental. Okay. This fellow, this young guy had too much to drink at at work after they finished the project. He had too much to drink in the bar. He made the decision to get in his car. So he is responsible. Right. And the issue in that case is well, is the employer also responsible in part right. for what they uh, they got the process moving? And the court said yes. Yes. And so, what, but in the consideration of the award or, or damages, and I, I don't know the proper legal term, but would there be a reduced amount because the employer was only partly responsible for that uh, accident uh, later in the day? Yeah, Bill, was that 75% yeah, the employer? It, it, the, the employer in that case was found to be significantly at fault. Oh, really? And, and okay. I think it came as a bit of a surprise because bars generally are found to be somewhere between 25 and 50 percent at fault right um and in this case the employer was found to be 75 percent at fault the uh, judge, that's that's what i was after was the high. number yeah and, okay. and the, the judge in that case said there's an even higher onus um on employers to ensure that their employees are safe than a commercial host would um and in this case they knew the young guy was driving because mm -hmm. he lived 
far away from where he was working. So right. they knew he was driving. And they actually provided the alcohol in a situation where he probably felt compelled to drink it mm-hmm. because it was kind of like everyone, hey, let's all get together and, and have Team drinks. moment. Team, Team moment. moments. Yes. And yeah. in, those, in those factual situations, um, the court said an employer has a really high duty to monitor how much uh, they have and a responsibility to make sure they don't they don't leave in an unsafe way. And I, I think it was a real message to employers. Right. Um, you're going to be found to be highly at fault in those circumstances. That's very interesting because, of course, this is the time when it's pretty typical that uh, people with desks and offices have a, a bottle of something in the big drawer on the bottom and are quite happy to, to share, and especially on the on Fridays heading into the weekend, and if you're going to, to take a bit of a break over the holidays, have a few pops and, you know, wish everybody well. It's that time of year. So, but there are are real liabilities. There are real legal issues, knives hanging over all of this scenario. Joe, how do, how do, how do people, obviously, the easy way to avoid any legal issues is don't do it. But if you, if you want to carry on, any tips, any thoughts? Well, Sterling, I, I, the message that I see that comes from these cases is when you get someone drunk, you know that they're going to go out and probably make or possibly make some bad decisions. Mm-hmm. And in, in, in the case we talked about, the fellow made the bad decision to go out and drink even more. Right. Um, so when you get someone drunk, uh, you have a responsibility, they do as well, for what bad things might happen. Uh, the solution might be, the simple rule is, if you want to give people a, a drink on a Friday afternoon, and we've often done that in our office, oh, sure. we don't have an unlimited amount of alcohol. Aha. Uh-huh. We have enough that maybe people will have one or two or three glasses of wine, mm-hmm. and that's it. It shuts down. Right. If we said, here's a case of wine, and let's have music and bring in some food, then I think we, we become responsible for, peop- for people who are intoxicated, who go out and intoxicated people make bad decisions. And, of course, Bill, the other option to the employer is, instead of cracking that bottle of wine, give it to the staff person and say, take it home and enjoy it for dinner tonight. Enjoy it over the holidays. So everybody gets their their drinks, just maybe not on the job or in a situation where they can cause some trouble on the way home. That's right. And I think what Joe is saying, and, and you know, the smart employer has policies and procedures. Um, you know, especially big employers where they say, okay, if we're going to have drinks on a Friday, no more than two. Right. Or um, they do have an obligation to monitor. That's the whole thing. And, and you don't want to have an open bar. You just don't um, because you can't monitor them. Right. Um, and in uh, the, the Nike decision that we talked about and the uh, Ontario decision, there were open bars or they didn't know how much they had to drink. And they said, they, you have an obligation to monitor and to make sure that they don't leave drunk. Um, and in those circumstances, take the keys away. Um, you know, have some policy in place where if someone does somehow get through the cracks and drink too much. Right. You know it and you, you take active steps to prevent them from, from getting in uh, behind a wheel. But I guess moderation being the the key in the first place, Joe Murphy, with uh, just you 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 uh, uh, limit the amount of uh, alcohol that could be consumed on these occasions, so you lower the risk considerably. Yeah, and and Sterling, I've got a friend who um, can drink a lot, and when he starts drinking a lot, up to a certain point, you could say to him, "Give me your keys. Let's be safe," and he would. Sure. But if he gets beyond that limit, he won't give you his keys. I know people like that too. So you've got to you've got to say, yeah. okay, we're approaching that limit. Let's yep. get him to give up the keys because if you go beyond that limit, again making bad decisions because he's drunk. Yep. He says, no, I'm not giving up my keys. I'm driving. And, and what's interesting is that Ontario decision that I was speaking of. Uh, the court actually said, in those circumstances, when 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 something like that would happen, you actually ha- have an obligation to go as far as phoning the police. Oh, you, the, uh, the, the employer, employer yeah. or the homeowner, knowing that this guy is now instantly a public menace. To if them, you, if you a, don't a menace to say themselves so. as well. Okay. Yeah. And then, so if you don't uh, alert the police that this this guy is out there, then you're doubly liable almost. Potentially. Interesting stuff. Our guests, Joe Murphy and Bill Dick from Murphy Batista, Vancouver Personal Injury Lawyers at 650 West Georgia Street downtown and online at murphybatista.com. Lots more still ahead on The Law Show. Back after this. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL 650.